And this morning I am having my cacao cauliflower oats topped with frozen berries as per usual. I use the whole, the just regular cauliflower flor florets off of just a whole head of cauliflower. I chopped up, uh, I just chopped up some florets roughly and threw them into the Kosari. <laughs> Not sorry, Kosari. And I'm using the uh, Four Sigmatics Mushroom Mocha Mix this morning for a little extra extra caffeine just to give Totoro a little run for his money there. <laughs> this stuff is really good. I also like the um, Chill, with, Chill with Rishi one. Um, that one's really delightful as well and does not have caffeine, but this one has a little bit of caffeine because it's got the coffee in there. So they actually taste kind of mocha-y. <laughs> really enjoying that. So last week I was talking about how much I like the um, tea pigs. Um, jelly and cake uh, tea. I've really been enjoying it. I finished it. And they reached out and sent me all of these teas, you guys. How nice was that? I'm really excited. Um, first of all, they sent me this upbeat. I think I'm most excited for this. It has um, hibiscus, beetroot, ginger, green tea, and carrot. So this is a caffeinated tea, but I know it sounds like an odd mix. However, you all know my taste at this point. I'm obsessed with beets and carrots, and hibiscus is my favorite tea. I prefer it um, over, over many others, and so I think I'm going to like this the most. And then with a the green tea in there, ooh, it's going to be good. And then they sent um, a lemon tea, the uplifting tea called Happy. He's cute. This one also looks really good, rhubarb and ginger. That one's caffeine free. And then yum, chocolate and mint. This one, what does this have? Chocolate and peppermint herbal infusion with um, chocolate chips. Ooh, this one, this one sounds like it might be a little sweetened. All of their bags are really cute. They're these little um, triangle temples and they're biodegradable. And then they sent me a chili chai. I'm gonna enjoy that one quite a bit. It's cinnamon, Assam tea. Ooh, I don't believe I've ever had that. Chili, vanilla, cardamom. I cannot imagine this being anything but delightful. They also sent me a spiced winter red tea. The spiced winter red tea is rooibos, which I tend to not care for rooibos, but this has a lot of other stuff in it that I might that might make it more palatable to me. Um, orange peel, ginkgo, orange blossom, cinnamon, ginseng, cloves, and safflower petals. Ooh. And then super fruit. <laughs> Isn't she cute? <laughs> um, hibiscus. Oh, yeah, I'm going to like this. Hibiscus, elderberry, black currants, currants, and natural flavor, cranberry, and blueberry. Oh, yeah. That's going to be good. And then an apple and cinnamon one. I really enjoy apple cinnamon teas. What does this have in it? Apple, cinnamon, chicory, and blackberry leaves. Cool. Thanks, tea pigs. I'm really excited for these. Oh, hey guys, what's up? I hope your week is going well. I am off to run errands today. Um, I just applied some Elta MD UV Clear. Um, I recently got some more of that, and I love that sunscreen. I've been using that as my re reapply as of late. Um, it's because I love the outro so much, um, but I'm kind of wanting mine to, to last. <laughs> I go through it pretty quickly. Um, but UV Clear is great. Um, you all have asked me, like, which one do I prefer? Here's the deal. After having having used Altruist now for, for a good bit and having a long-standing history of using UV Clear, I, I feel as though I can, can uh, adequately compare just user needs between the two. And UV Clear, I wish were um, water resistant. So right now in Houston, as I've mentioned, it's 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 as though you're swimming all of the time, okay? Um, you're just bathed in a cloak of, of, of moisture. Um, and so it'd be nice if UV Clear were water resistant. I would have a little bit more confidence in its uh, last stability as far as the protection throughout the, between reapplications, whereas Altruist is water resistant. UV Pure, Elta MD UV Pure is water resistant and is a great choice. It is their, it is their, one of their more affordable mineral, it, it's a mineral exclusive sunscreen and one of their more affordable 
affordable ones. It does leave more of a cast than UV clear and it is heavier than UV clear. Very moisturizing. So that's how those two differ. But that one is that one is a good choice for the face, but I don't think you would be as happy with that aesthetically as you would UV clear. But UV clear is not water resistant and is a combination sunscreen. So it's zinc and octinoxate, whereas UV pure is exclusively mineral, zinc, titanium, and is water resistant. We'll leave a little bit will does leave a cast um and but altruist is water resistant chemical exclusive filters that are not fda approved in the u.s um and lightweight no zero cast this guy's getting in in his shiny truck that is a uh, uv reflector here he's looking at me like why are you talking to yourself because i'm i'm talking about sunscreen what are you up to but anyways, I am going to run in here. I'm at the bank. And then I'm going to head to Crow Hair. Actually, I'm going to go to Costco first. What the hell am I joking? What, what am I on? But yes, um, UV clear, wonderful. I just wish it were water resistant for purposes of the humidity here in Houston. I would just prefer that. Um, but... The nice thing about UV clear though, it has a little niacinamide in it and it gives you a little brightening effect, which is which is nice. I don't believe Altruist has that has that in it. But no cast with either UV clear or, or Altruist. Altruist is more moisturizing but not heavy. Um, Altruist hits a nice balance of, of not being greasy, not being shiny, not being heavy, but actually really the vehicle is nice. It's a nice moisturizing lotion. The lotion vehicle that UV Clear is in is a little bit lighter. Um, hence, you know, it, it, it's marketed and, and is meant to appeal to people who have really ha oily skin and, and acne prone skin. So it's a lighter, it's a lighter lotion. Um, but all sunscreens are moisturizing, guys. You all are always asking me about layering moisturizers. You don't need to do that. Your sunscreen is in a moisturizing vehicle. I mean, lotions and creams, that is the vehicle they are in. You don't need to, to be compounding, um, you know, more moisturizer on there. It's, you know. I mean, it, the, the humectants that I've used in the past, like the uh, Hadalabo Super Plumping Gel Cream, I'm not currently using right now because there's enough there's enough super plumping in the air. Um, you know, that adds a little bit of zhuzh, um, but is not essential whatsoever. That just holds on to water onto your face before you seal it in with your moisturizing sunscreen. Uh, humectant alone does not, does not moisturize. It just kind of just kind of holds on to water on the top layer of the skin um, but if you just leave it on there the water will eventually evaporate it just kind of slows it down and uh, makes a little bit more makes a little bit more um, hydration there at the surface that's all not essential but this morning you guys I um, tried the lion's mane from four sigmatics in my coffee that has to be now my favorite. That's the only packet of that that I have, and that's the first time I've tried it. It is so good. That one, that one, I almost I can't tell if I like that or the chaga better. Um, I know that the green tea has the lion's mane in it, and I've really been enjoying that, the green tea with ginger. But the lion's mane mushroom elixir on its own, well, within the coffee is really good. The the four sigmatics coffees that have mushrooms in them like their their coffees um you know they i i like them i really like them a lot but they do you know they're mixed with instant coffee so if you hate instant coffee you're not going to enjoy the coffees instead i i think you would be better served getting the mushroom elixir packets and adding them to your coffee of choice rather than the instant one but personally i like having an instant coffee um, as like my second coffee because i don't have time to rebrew bialetti and you know instant coffee is more portable um, i ha usually have access to boiling water and other locations but like i don't have access to to my espresso maker and all that or time to go through that. I mean, I really don't have, have the time throughout the day to, to, to be brewing. <laughs> um, so I find that instant coffee for a second coffee is convenient and I, I actually don't mind the taste. 
So for me, the their instant coffees have been good. But if you don't like instant coffee, then stick with just the elixir and add it to your coffee. But the cacao mixes are really good. The um, as I mentioned this morning, the chill with reishi one is excellent. Not super sweet. They're sweetened with coconut sugar, um, not stevia. I, I, actually, there may be a little stevia in there as well. I'm not certain, but they're really good. I've been enjoying them. Now, we have an outdoor worker over here who is, uh, looks like he's um, paving the cement here. And he's got a neck guard and uh, sun protective eyewear which I think is probably more in place just to help him see but he does not have a hat on and he has he has no hair oof that is no way now I hope he's wearing sunscreen on his skin I'm over here in Costco and they have these um Seville packing cube things I, I don't know this seems kind of too good to be true you get two of them for $20 um, and it shows this gal sitting on them. Um, but here is the stand-up. Actually, it does seem sturdy enough that it would allow you to sit. It does seem sturdy enough that you could sit on it, just as it's shown in the picture. I don't know that I love the color. Like, ottomans are really convenient in the, in the time. Ottomans are really convenient when you're just sitting and want to put your leg, legs up, but I re rarely do that. And for the rest of the time, they're just there in the way that you, you know, something to trip over and bang your knee shin against. But that one with its uh, storage, storage ability is a little more compelling, but I don't know. Then I was also looking at this Seville Classic Stainless Steel Garment Rack because I have that white shelving in my closet that I detest. And you all have seen my minimalist wardrobe. I really don't have that much in the way of clothing. And I'm thinking of taking that hideous white shelving down to open up the, open up the closet a little bit more and instead just having one of these in there. Um, but this one's a little bit, actually, it's not even that wide. I think that would be okay. But I don't know that I love the love the metal appearance. I guess it'd be okay. It's nice that you can set boxes on the bottom as well. Handy. I don't know what it is why those white shelving units and closets have not died. They're awful. Does anyone like those? I mean, I guess some people find them useful depending on what your storage system is. I just think that they're hideous and I've never I don't know. Apartments always kind of install them in these illogical ways. My new apartment, they've actually done a a smarter job than in my older apartment. Oh my gosh, that place was terrible. But oh, check out this Conair uh, Extreme Steam. It's useful for uh, ironing on the go. And lunch today is six-inch no cheese veggie sandwich on Italian with oregano, and I did red wine vinegar today instead of uh, mustard. Uh, they tend to be a little heavy-handed with the mustard here. I love mustard, but uh, they tend to they tend to uh, have a strong squeeze on the bottle. And uh, green bell pepper, spinach, black olives, cucumber, tomato, and lettuce. Believe it or not, this bread alone, I think it has like nine grams of protein in it. I don't know what they do to, to the bread. They probably infiltrate it with vital wheat gluten or something. <laughs> they don't have sourdough at this location, and I know it's a vegan option, but they don't have it in many, many locations. So last night in the gym, Triple G was on, Guy's Grocery Game, and it was the redemption round. Now, that's where all of the winning chefs come back to compete in a last round of competition for the like ultimate grocery champion chef. But their, their ingredient in one of the rounds was <laughs> Chef Boyardee beef ravioli. And I was cracking up in the gym because one of the, one of the um, competitors was a, um, a man from France. He had grown up in the south of France. He's a professional chef in the United States now, but had grown up in the south of France, was French. Um, and he had never had Chef Boyardee uh, macro, um, 
Chepoir de Lasagna. And he's like, I've never had this before. I don't know anything about it. But his face, when he opened the jar, it, it was just comical, like. <laughs> he wasn't being smug or arrogant about, about it at all. He was really, really lighthearted about it. But I was secretly cheering for him because, you know, it's like, this guy, the, the other contestants were all American born and had clearly eaten Chef Boyardee ravioli as part of their childhood experience and knew what they were getting into. Uh, but he, he really didn't know what he was doing. And I applaud him because <laughs> when in doubt, deep fry. And he chose to deep fry the Chef Boyardee ravioli. And one of the judges didn't like it, but one of the other judges did end up liking it. I thought he really did a good job. And I was secretly rooting for him. I was rooting for him the whole time because he really, all of his, all of his dishes just looked really good. And the fact that he was able to pull that off, it's like, he should have won. But the guy who ended up winning, he took the Chef Boyardee and pureed it, um, which I suppose could make it palatable. I've actually never had Chef Boyardee, so I think I would be in the same in the same boat as the as the guy from the south of France. But unlike the guy from the south of France, I did not grow up eating uh, uh, that kind of fine cuisine. <laughs> um, he had he had the luxury, I think, of having been having grown up on um, his father was a was a professional chef. But yeah, his face when he opened the jar, he's like, "Why does this exist?" I think he said. <laughs> I don't know why this exists. I mean, my thoughts exactly. <laughs> uh, this is my territory though. The legume section. <laughs> All right, so starting at Costco, I got these Reduce Hydro Pro non-slip um, water containers. They're 14 ounces, aren't they adorable? I got these because I'm gonna be traveling soon and I need a water bottle that won't leak in my purse uh, and is pretty lightweight and will keep water cold. My Nalgene bottles are a little bit too bulky to carry traveling and my Bubba cup, you know, isn't leak proof. So I thought these were really a great ideal, ideal, you know, fix. And they have these cute little um, handles. I mean, they're designed for children, but 14 ounces is pretty a pretty substantial volume. It's, it's just perfect. And there's this cute little lamb and then this little bear. I think these both were um, maybe $14 for the two of them. They're BPA free um, and they are, what kind of material is this? It's metal. Um, and you can keep hot things in there, cold things. It's designed for back to school for lunch boxes, but I thought it was just the perfect size for traveling. Then of course I also got some crunchy dried beet chips at Costco. Love these so much. Really have to, really have to control myself around the beet chips. You guys know I normally get the fresh and quick spinach, but Taylor Farms uh, showed up to the party and the, uh, bag spinach. So I got the bag spinach from Taylor Farms. It's 13 servings, um, similar to, to the fresh and quick and they were priced the same. So I have that. Then one of the top values that you can get at Costco, in my opinion, is apple cider vinegar. If you consume apple cider vinegar, you get these two bottles for less than five bucks, which is much cheaper than at the grocery store. And they, it's always the Vermont village. Sometimes the label looks different, but uh, it has the mother in it, which is basically kind of the, the probiotic stuff in the bottom. And I really like it. It's really good. Highly recommend it. Such a good value. Then from Kroger, I got another thing of these organic yellow beets. I'm kicking myself for never, for being such, for being such a, a beet pre preparing phobic and always buying, you know, prepared beets. Now that I have the Kosari, Making these is brainless. I'll tell you how to do it. You just cut the top off, save the greens to consume. Definitely don't throw those away. Um, you, can, you can eat these greens and they're very good. But you just place the um, beets in the kosari on the, the special steam tray that it comes with, with one cup of water in the bottom. And then you just put it on the steam potato, on the cooked potato setting as though you're cooking a potato. They come out perfectly. You don't have to peel them or anything. Um, you know, you can peel them if you want. The peel just rubs off, but that's how your hands get all messy. 
but you can eat the peel and it's mineral dense. So, you know, you don't need to, it, it's, it's, it's so easy. I did it. Okay. It's so easy and I'm sold on buying, buying beets now. Um, but I'm not going to give up my dried beet habit either. <laughs> so I just have more beets in my diet. And these yellow ones are really good, um, by the way. Then I also got a head of cabbage. This is really a, a staple on my diet. I, I love cabbage and it's so cheap. <laughs> I got a thing of garlic and I got a yellow onion. Then I got a um, yellow bell pepper. These were on sale, really good price. I think they were, you get two for a dollar. Bell peppers are always so expensive, no matter the season. I got zucchini, cause it's that time of the year and I'm really enjoying making my matcha zotes with the um, Lion's Made Matcha Ginger Tea from the, um, from the Four Sigmatics, really liking that. Then I got my petite purples from the private selection. These were on sale two fifty dollars for this little bag. Then I got one of the organic white sweet potatoes. I have been liking these. Um, this was the only one that was not massive, so I just got this one. <laughs> then I got six organic apples from the ugly fruit bins. Um, so total this was $2. Um, if you're new to my grocery hauls, my Kroger does this thing where it, um, you know, has to get rid of produce that in my opinion is perfectly, perfectly good, but it has to get rid of it because either it's not attractive enough or I don't know, it has a bruise or I don't really understand the logic, but they sell it for much, much cheaper uh, than, than the, uh, than the uh, normal price. Also got a head of cauliflower. I've really been liking that yellow cauliflower, but they were all sold out of it. They had a broccoli cauliflower hybrid. Has anyone had that? I haven't tried that yet. I almost got it, but I stuck with the, with the white cauliflower. Then in the legume front, I got some light red kidney beans. I haven't had these in a while. I've had them at my mom's house recently, but I've been kind of hankering them. And then I also would like sometime, not this week or anytime too soon, but I, I have it in my head I want to make some vegan baked beans. So I got some navy beans as well. Then I got um, two bags of radishes. Because I'm going to be traveling, I actually like to um, bring inst instant oatmeal packets with me. I find they're very convenient in hotel rooms. You can usually find access to boiling water. And I don't like to go to Starbucks and pay the upcharge for their for basically the same thing. I got the Simple Truth Organic Instant Oatmeal um, Oats because... Um, a, it's on sale, B, I had a coupon, and C, I was comparing it to the non-organic brand, uh, Kroger brand, of Instant Oats, and unlike the non-organic, this one does not have any added sodium. It is just organic rolled oats, um, whereas the non-organic um, variety of Instant Oats, by, by Kroger at least, had like a bunch of stuff added to it, and included in that was salt. And you all, if you've been watching me from for some time, you know I do my best to avoid added salt as much as possible. They really sneak it into a lot of things, and it can really, really creep up and um, and bump up all of your your sodium consumption for the day. Um, I also got another carton of this organics, uh, the Simple Truth Organics Unsweetened Soy Milk. This happens to be on sale currently, and is I also had a coupon for it. And I like it. Of the, of the soy milks that I've had, this is one of the better ones that I've had. It's very, very creamy and um, unsweetened. So sometimes that's hard to find. You know, they, they oftentimes sweeten a lot of the non-dairy milks. I don't like that. Then in the non-food front, I was really excited. This was in the clearance bin. It is a woo, woo bamboo brush. I've been wanting to try one of these because you all know I use, you know, reusable toothbrushes, not reusable tooth, you know, disposable toothbrushes, and they're really bad for the environment. I mean, really bad. Um, and so I've been wanting to try a bamboo one, and this one happened to be on clearance for $2.39. So I'm going to give it a whirl. I hope it's good. Comment below, and if you use it like something like this, it's a little bit more environmentally friendly. I would love to know what you use. Do you buy it in bulk? How do you do? How do you do that? <laughs> then, oh my gosh, I had an emergency last night. I ran out of dental floss after eating a spinach salad. It was awful. I had to go to bed with, with spinach in my teeth 
because brushing alone did not get it out. I had to brush my teeth like three times and there was still spinach in there. It drove me nuts all night long. I know, I feel as though every dentist and their mother is like, it's like nails on a chalkboard to hear that. It was only one night, but I, I went ahead and got two. That way I wouldn't run out <laughs> uh, anytime in the future. Speaking of running out, it's time for a new mascara. So I got my Maybelline Colossal. This is my favorite mascara. This morning I used the uh, Color Science one. I've had that for several months now, so it's time for it to go bye-bye. Um, I enjoyed it, but this one is better. Um, it's my favorite. I've also tried the Color Girl Lash Blast um, recently, and I did not care for that. Oh no, I got the waterproof one. I thought I even looked to make sure I didn't. I normally don't get the waterproof one, but... I have gone and done it. I went, I got the waterproof one. Oh well. Anyways, moving along, I got another packet of the, a box of the True Lemon Wildberry Lemonades. Love these. And then this is on Ibotta currently, the Stir Drops. I, I like these. And the Coconut Pineapple one is really good. FYI, if you're new to my commentary on these, on both of these, I will remind you that the True Lemon is very, very sweet. And I put one of these packets in 32 ounces versus the recommended, I think it recommends you put it in like, what does it say? Maybe eight. It is, it is too sweet to put, to put it in whatever they recommend. Yeah, they say put it in 16. Too sweet for 16. Put it in 32 and that's just right. Um, this one, however, I find that I have to give, I do two squeezes of this into 32 ounces and it's just right. But yep, yeah, that's everything that I got at Kroger and Costco. So I'm going to put all this away. So yeah, that's everything that I got at Kroger and Costco. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me and enjoyed my day. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.